I try to speak without a microphone. Welcome uh, to my presentation. It's the uh, final presentation of this uh, conference, I think. Uh, my name is Elvira Versche, as you know. I'm a vis visual artist and I'm living in the Netherlands. But I, uh, I'm born in uh, Germany and I studied at uh, different schools uh, of art, universities of art, uh, in Kassel and Braunschweig. <coughs> Something strange happened here? No. Okay. In Braunschweig. Um, I studied um, art, as I said, and I had uh, many, I started with, um, he uh, held exhibitions in, uh, in Germany and uh, many countries in uh, Europe. Um, I, I made paintings in the beginning of my career and uh, happenings, later we called it performances and installations. So that means uh, I mix different uh, materials, different uh, types of uh, media. And um, then after my study, I went uh, to the Netherlands and I worked as a film director in a film uh, company. And later I started again with painting and went on with my artistic work. Um, now, I, I think that's enough uh, about my career. I can tell a lot, but uh, it's uh, 45 years I'm an artist and I dedicate my life to the art. But if you want some more, please ask me later. I will start with a quote of my compatriot, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Uh, yesterday, when we went to the Museum of uh, Techniques in, here in Istanbul, I was surprised when I saw the quote of Goethe by the entrance of the museum. And this is not a, such a good translation. And so we, translate, we took the translation from, uh, from the museum. Erika wrote it for me. And that is, who himself and others knows, here is rightly guided, Orient and Occident, are no more divided. I think it's better than the other translation. Um, he wrote this uh, 1819, 200 years ago, nearly 200 years ago, in the East-West Divan. And this work can be seen as a symbol of a stimulating exchange and mixture between East and West. And I think it's still current. Is it right? Still yeah. Today I will talk to you about my art project Sammlung Weltensand, as uh, Hussein uh, already um, announced. And uh, some of you have seen tiny uh, work aus outside. And it's a complex geometrical floor pattern made of sand from around the world. In the past 12 years, I developed many of these installations at different locations in churches. This is a cathedral in the Netherlands, an art center, museum, synagogue. These site-specific projects are grouped under the name Sammlung Weltensand collection of world sand, but each project has its own topic, its own design, its own ornament. And the all over concept is always especially developed for that space where I'm. When I prepare a project, I take many factors into account. First, the space, the characteristics of a space, its historical identity, the light conditions, the floor conditions, the color of the floor, the texture of the floor, all plays an important role in the concept of the design. Uh, further, the occasion, for example, the theme, the topic of an exhibition where the installation is part of. And um, if possible, I visit the spot uh, before, otherwise I get information by, uh, by the organization, from the organization, photographs and so on. 
two aspects are essential in this work. First, the work material and the construction of the ornaments. When I started collecting sand for this project, I was fascinated by the diversity of colors and mineral composition found in sand from around the world. Meanwhile, Sammlung Weltensand is a comprehensive collection with more than 1,500 samples with a wide range of colors, all shades of red, deep black to pure white, a few green shades, only a few. The collection is brought together not only by me, but many people from all over the world have participated. While traveling for business or on holiday, people scoop sand somewhere, put it in a yard, in a plastic bag, a bottle, documented with a note about the finding place and frequently enclosing a photo. This is a young soldier in Afghanistan. It's a boyfriend of the friend of my son. And he was in Uruzgan in Afghanistan. And I was very afraid that he wouldn't come back, but everything is okay <laughs> with him. Um, as I already mentioned, the collection includes sand from all continents. Yeah. Yeah, from all continents, from many remarkable. Okay. Um, many remarkable sites with uh, religious history, from, for example, Inca temples, the Egypt pyramids. Um, sacred caves, uh, places of pilgrimage, uh, temples of Artemisia in Ephesus, for example, or the sacred cave of Johannes uh, the Apostle on Patmos, just some uh, examples. Further, significant, significant places, for example, Pella, the birthplace of Alexander the Great, or Persepolis, Iran, which was destroyed by Alexander. And then sometimes these two fields, the sand from these fields, lay together in, in the pattern. So there are there very meaningful um, situations in the pattern. Um, oh, uh, places of, oh yes, I, I saw this. That was in 2003. I got it from the Top Kapi Palace from Istanbul. And I really remember, I was very happy when I got it from a student of me. And uh, they told that there, uh, there was uh, work in construction, is that right? The Top Kapi Palace was under construction or restored. restored, something. So they got some sand from the people who worked there. Uh, further places of striking political uh, occurrences, for example, Ground Zero, New York, and from the memorial of Palis Palestine, Vietnam, Syria, and Tahrir Square in Egypt. Now these are, this is made by my foundation. Uh, they make these um, Yes, to these maps to show the locations. Uh, for the performance of the work, I use traditional tools, instrument which possess the same simplicity and clarity as sand. A mortar to crunch clots of sand, a piece of chalk, oh, you can't see it, uh, attached to a string to draw the circle and the lines, a wooden sled as a ruler, and a great variety of tea, small tea strainers. You saw it, I have some here, but it's not enough. <laughs> Sometimes they all have to be in a different, uh, for all these different sands, I, I need very different tea strainers. And I need a little board, piece of cardboard, to designate boundaries, so otherwise the fields are not so exact. 
Um, this is a part, then you saw the sand, and that's a, a result of what we can make only by this pure material. The performance of the whole work, the making of the whole work, has a special uh, dynamic feature of its own. It's always in front of the audience. I wor work, the work takes place, it's a work in progress format. And always the beginning, the first drawing of the, uh, feel of the pattern on the floor, then the audience can attend this process. So they are involved in the whole uh, when the artwork shape, takes shape, the whole process, they are involved in it. And uh, when they uh, come, when they see the first patterns, um, they are amazed by all these, uh, you see it? That's in Berlin, in front of the Mashata and the Pergamon Museum, Museum of Islamic Civilization. That's in Leiden, a part of the pattern. So, and then, no, it's, no, stop, ma'am. Um, and then we, we start with work and we fill the sand into the fields. And when they, later when they come and they, they cannot imagine that, that it is real sand. And they, they ask me, is it sand? And how do you color it? And do you add pigments? Or um, is it uh, spice? Or, uh, so I say, no, it's real sand. OK. And after a while, they say, and what did you add to the red? No, it's just a red from Australia, for example. OK. And is that curry they ask? So it's, uh, very, they can't believe that it is. And I think um, by sieving the sand, the surface of the sand looks so smooth and soft. And the light falls in a different way on the grains. And so the sand is more colorful than it is in a bag or a yeah, you know, so they are very brilliant, the colors. Let's go a little bit uh, closer to the material, the sand. No, that's just the work in progress that was in Shaja. Many people came along from India. No, I will go on. So. Let's go a bit closer to the material. Sand is such a basic, humble material. Sand absorbs everything that has ever happened on a spot, down to the minutest impression. Sand has taken up for millions of years all creatures, all living beings, people, animals, plants, everything is taken up by the earth. Everything is sunk in the sand layer after layer. Mostly, it's not visible. It's destroyed, disbanded. Sometimes, you find a pot shirt, a shard as a tiny sign from a past world. That is in Iran, a Zoroastrian, Zoroastrian, right? Zoroastrian temple. You can uh, say, and I feel it so, sand is the memory of the earth. Layer after layer, it preserves the traces of ephemeral human existence. Many years ago, I got little sand from Troja. It's forbidden, I know, but somebody brought a very, very tiny um, uh, little sand from Troja. And at the archaeological site of Troja, you can see a cross section through the layers of the earth, and layer six is the period of the Trojan War, he told, 3,500 years ago. And just one centimeter of sand is the rest, the dust of 100 years of human history, of the life of Troja. It's fascinating for me. And when I looked at this with a magnifying glass, then I became silent because I saw melted tiny particles of glass in the sand. So, life fallen into dust, this mystical quality is tangible in sand, in sand, in, in this project, 
and it has an essential part of the whole, this whole uh, project. The poem by the Persian astronomer, mathematician and poet Omar Khayyam recalls the continual reworking of life into new forms. O fashioner of clay, beware, and treat your clay with utmost care, as you may find that you have brought with it, beneath your hand upon your wheel, Faridun's finger or the hand of Cyrus. Reza. Just this morning, Elvira asked me to find the original poem by Hayam. I tried my best, but you know, finding a poem quickly on the uh, internet is very difficult. But I should uh, actually comment that was one of the be most beautiful piece that she could choose to actually represent the idea of how important and holy is the soil. In fact, uh, Hayam talking about what, because she showed uh, a Zoroastrian temple. In the belief, in Zoroastrian belief, soil is holy. You should not, uh, you should respect soil and actually and uh, look at it as something very valuable because this also brings your culture and your background. Freydun and Cyrus, uh, like Freydun is a kind of uh, mythological uh, figure of one of those old kings in Iran. And Cyrus was a real person, as you know, who actually established Persian Empire 2,500 years ago. So Hayam says that when you look at the soil, respect it, because that shows like a, an ancient uh, culture, ancient civilization, and then, uh, so the way that gives the message to us is look at soil and see many, many cultures, many, many uh, civilizations have come to this earth, and the only thing that I have left from them are the soils of different colors. Thank so you. bringing together. Thank you, Reza. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't tell this because I only had a half hour to present my work, so I, I shortened it, and, but Reza took the time to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's, um, these ideas are very close to me. So now I will show some images to give you an impression of various projects. Um, I will tell a little about the concept regarding the content, but I will, I will see what I can do, because the time is going on. This is uh, Chaja, the Museum of Islamic Civilization. It was in spring of 2013, and I was invited by that museum. I made a quite huge ornament of 10 by 5 meters, and we worked with three people, we worked on it for uh, 16 days. Eight hours at 10 hours a day. In the morning at 8 o'clock we started and sitting on our knees to do this. The title was Rihla, the travel. Rihla, a classic Arab term for the journey, has many links with this project. <coughs> Traveling and sand souvenirs are the basic requirements for this work. But the, the title not only refers to the often far away origins of the material, Rihla has also a connotation of nomadic travel and at a much higher level, a journey undertaken for the sake of the divine knowledge. And further I made, and that's too much here now, I made a comparison between travel in this way and looking at the pattern. You can, uh, it's like an inner travel when you look at the pattern, but that's later I will tell more about this. The next project is uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands, in the National Museum of Antiquities. This project was called Chamse. I developed this ornament based on a hexagonal um, division of a circle. 
and um, I worked with very small fragments of the pattern. I didn't add very much. Um, and this ornament was seven by eight meters. It was like a landscape in front of the Egyptian temple in, in this museum. Kada Abdullah, a Persian uh, poet, uh, he opened this uh, uh, exhibition this evening before it was mixed up the sand and danced. Uh, and he said, I'm home. <laughs> the next, oh yeah. Here you see, you see more about the, the, the sand that's uh, different surfaces. Yes, and open spaces. I work, worked with open spaces and uh, um, because the floor was very nice. It fits very good with the colors of the sand. Sometimes it's not so good, so then I cover all the surface. And, uh, okay. The next is New York. Uh, I was invited uh, by the Museum of Arts and Design. And um, it was a part of the international exhibition Swept Away, Dust, Dirt and Ashes in Contemporary Art. I call this work Electron. Electron is the Greek word for amber. And if you rub amber, you get, it gets loaded, you, there is a kind of friction. Um, I worked in this pattern with uh, two layers. Uh, the first layer uh, called the, is the the draft. Oh yeah, no, yeah, uh, the draft, and I uh, the draft remained in the corners and at the edges, and I filled only some fields. You see, and the floor plays an important uh, uh, role in the whole concept. Um, it's. Um, I like this because you can recognize the pattern, the construction of a pattern. The other parts where, where it is assembled is a, it's a, a design from the Alhambra in Granada. This, I call this the second layer, this, and this uh, open layer with uh, construction line and uh, construction elements. Uh, and the second layer um, where I assemble different shapes to a polygon, polygonal figure, um, I feel that these layers are more uh, closed. It's like a shielding skin on the layer. And the, the design comes uh, be, to rest. It becomes quiet. But, and these two layers are in a certain uh, conflict, the, the tension between these two layers. Uh, oh. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, I like this part, but I think some of you or many of you would say, mm, that's not good. <laughs> the lines are not heavy, happy, I think Jean-Marc will say. <laughs> but uh, I like this part because it's, um, uh, it's a remarkable part because it's a confrontation between two different ways of of doing this whole pattern. Uh, yes, I think that's quite, it's quite, and it's covered. You can't uh, imagine, you can't retrace uh, the design, the, the uh, construction, the design. It's all gone. It's hermetically closed. Yeah? The, uh, the lines per set, for me the lines are happy, but uh, I think perhaps for others the lines are not so happy. <laughs> uh, in this uh, part, when we worked, we worked and worked, and then the, we had this space, and I had um, uh, brought sand from Amsterdam, and then I used uh, sand from Amsterdam <coughs> in the center because New York was, uh, um, uh, people from the Netherlands settled in New York and they call, it was uh, later it was called uh, New York, but it's, uh, the beginning was um, people from Amsterdam. So I 
this octagon I made from sand from Amsterdam, the eight uh, triangles around, that's uh, from the uh, Central Park in New York. And then in this field, there is sand from the Middle East, from uh, Iraq, uh, Iran, Jordan, Syria, um, Israel, um, Afghanistan. So it's all in this field together. Yes. The next one is uh, Synagogue Kupa in Krakow, in Poland. Um, I worked in a former synagogue in the old Jewish district, Kazimierz in Poland. And this uh, pattern has only one center, it's not a field. I started with a hexagram and then came to the four and the eight. Yeah. This is Petsch in um, Hungary. Uh, 2006, uh, Hungary was uh, European capital, capital of culture and I worked in the crypt of the cathedral um, and next to this uh, crypt there was an archaeological site in one of the early Christian grave chambers there was a fresco with a pentagram surrounded by flowers and birds I think. Um, I used a pentagram uh, as a basic unit for this uh, uh, um, ornament and the rest shapes this rhombi shapes uh, yeah I think it's not a, such a good thing but they, uh, I left them empty the only, I only used the pentagram to fill the pattern that's right for my hand yeah um, this is uh, in, in the Netherlands, Leowarden, the Wallonian church. This work was dedicated to Escher. It was in the context of a Bridges conference. Um, I revised a pattern from the Alhambra, and this uh, the place where Escher got inspired uh, by the Moorish patterns, and he used the same um, uh, division of a circle and the, the same... Uh, basic pattern and I rework this in my way I only use in the center I close it and then it was a free improvisation with this pattern sometimes the cir circumferences uh, are a part of the pattern because I had to no more time than one week and I worked alone one week on this pattern. So um, the open spaces and the whole pattern is very, um, very open. I, I like it very much, but it's, uh, it's uh, a result of the circumstances, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is in uh, Guimbra National Museum, uh, Machado de Castro. This uh, project uh, was a special, uh, special case. I collected the sand during my travel to Guimbra. I didn't take my collection or a part of my collection, but I collected sand from Amsterdam to, um, to Guimbra. And I used the colors of the sand in the sequence of my trip. The gray start in Amsterdam, then through colorful, colorful areas in Roussillon, France, the ochre mines, the old ochre mines, and then the beautiful area uh, of the mountain area in Portugal, Sierra de Estrella, a white limestone mountain with glittering mica. That's uh, from uh, Estrella, all these different shades, white, and they are very beautiful. Yeah, next, golden boy. Mm -hmm. uh, this was in uh, Germany, the National Museum of uh, Natural History. Now it's called Nature and Man, it's the same. 
um, that was, um, it, I called it Taksim, the division. Me was told that it is division. I, um, I don't know. Taksim Square, uh, it means. Uh, Water. What? Water? Yeah. Okay. That means Taksim. Oh, that means Taksim. Okay. Uh, somebody told me I would, I would uh, like to have a word uh, division, and so somebody told me. The division? Okay, yes, okay. That was uh, what I want to say. And the director of the museum, Mamun Fanza from Syria, he invited me to take part in the exhibition The Art of the Early Christians in Syria from 4th century to the 7th century. And we looked at the exhibits and several cross symbols were there. Uh, Chris, uh, this, uh, the cross symbol is much older than, the Chris, than Christianity, but it's a static symbol for me. And I tried to, to use uh, and to make it the cross as a symbol of, um, now I have to look at it. Uh, you see here one field and the other field which forms the cross here, here, here. So it's a movable cross and that's, I think, I, I liked it more than just the static cross. And the, it's after a motive from the Dome of Rocks in Jerusalem. I worked it out. Uh, in this way. Mm -hmm. Did you want to say something about the back of the No, that's later. <laughs> okay. As you have seen, geometric abstraction always provides inspiration for the layout uh, of my uh, work. I have learned a lot about Islamic patterns which I got to know during my travels, travels in the Islamic world. And I fall in love with these patterns and the world, the Islamic world, not only the patterns. Um, when I studied art in Germany, uh, there, was, uh, there were strange ideas about patterns. We uh, saw patterns were uh, uh, not, it was not a part of the field of art, it was a part of craftsmanship. So that was the idea we, we learned these ideas in 68 in this period. And uh, uh, they told us uh, patterns are static and they are, uh, uh, they are a result of a static society without development and uh, there is no uh, dynamic. So that was not a part of a uh, study of Art. art should be dynamic and free, and these patterns are hmm, not, uh, they are bounded to religion or um, something else. So I had, um, I, I always loved patterns, but um, it was a forbidden uh, terrain, a forbidden field for me. You understand what I say? Yeah? Okay. And then, um, uh, I, my first steps, I said, in this world of geometry, that was uh, 16 years ago. And then I reconstructed the ornaments of the Alhambra. And it was so difficult for me because I didn't know anything about this. I, I even didn't know that it is, uh, that it is uh, made by a division of a circle. So I, I learned a lot. I had some books. I, but I, Often I didn't know how to, to reproduct it, so it's, um, I feel like a monkey when I... <laughs> yeah. uh, but I was very amazed, and I, so, um, I was uh, so impressed by all that. I studied the ge geometric concepts, and I observed the principle, and I trained the inner mobility of my mind by exercising. And that was is very... Uh, it's very difficult. It was for me very difficult because my mind is not trained to in this unaccepted twist of these uh, patterns. And uh, 
so um, I had to to learn very very lot very much uh, the circle is always until now the starting point of my designs I never worked with the grid but I learned it now yesterday I think by Jean, Marc I love, and others so um, until now I never worked with the grid I always start with a circle and then I repeat it and then I get the field and um, so um, by doing this I experienced the pattern as a growth, growth model um, in some way there are some links with uh, the, the, the concept of Reina, uh, Reina's ideas and John Mark talks about morphogenesis yes and um, but I I see um, when I was uh, working on these patterns I experienced that it is a morphological process in the sense of Goethe again Goethe and what does this mean Goethe intro introduced sorry the term morphology after he had traveled to Italy and he had observed the development of the shape of plants, the changes of the shapes. Morphology means the principle of how an organism comes into being, how it is taking shape. And he said there is a constant movement, an ongoing change of shapes. And according to Goethe, all plants go through the same patterns from the seed the undivided unit the seed divides into two parts and then the development begins and the plant gets more and more differentiated there is not this is not a steady uh, uniform process but there is a dynamic between extension and contraction that's I hope enough for this and um, but behind this visible changes of the shape there is according to Goethe the idea and he calls it the archetype of the plant plant the Urpflanze and he has written a book about the metamorphose of the plant the metamorphose der Pflanze and a theory of um, of color he wrote and he says I'm not proud of my poems. I'm proud of the work of these two works because um, I didn't find a new facts, by, but I found a new way of looking at these facts, a new point of view. And when I was uh, younger, <laughs> I thought this archetype I saw it as an image extension contraction in the seeds again and so I saw it just as a static image but little by little I learned that it is not a static image but that's more like a movie you can imagine it like a movie and he talks about a continual movement and unrest in the plants and then I compare the Islamic patterns with this um, um, development of plants. I see in the geometric pattern uh, the eternal movement and this and the um, development as an organic process. When I worked in Berlin, uh, the Pergamon Museum, um, I realized uh, uh, an ornament based on the uh, in uh, Fayence uh, from Isfahan, the famous. Okay, that's one, yes. I had traveled to Isfahan and I came back with this um, um, ideas to, to work with this pattern. And uh, the uh, director of uh, the museum, Professor Hase, he said, um, Look at the diagonal. That's an important uh, uh, element of uh, Islamic patterns. And it was an important and vital uh, role played th this um, diagonal in the uh, ground plan of the Mashata where I worked in front of. So I, um, I tried, to, I had an, um, a field pattern of this 
uh, this pattern from, from, uh, from the Friday mosque, but I didn't understand uh, how it worked. I didn't, I, I, it was a prescription a kind of uh, uh, recite. Uh, and I missed the inner logical steps. So I tried and tried and looked and looked and I discovered how it is, how it, it is um, um, developed as a growth model. I saw, but you can say uh, I reinvented the wheel, but for me it was very important to see this, that the diagonal um, is a precondition for a new center in a pattern. And uh, the original cen uh, center loses its uh, dominance and then numeral focal points appear and create movement. And that's what I like the most. And in my floor pattern, you can see the movement of the pattern. Um, okay. These are some... Uh, pieces of, uh, of Berlin. Let's stop over here. Um, so I, um, uh, I like uh, to, to, uh, to show to the audience, they are not aware, when they, when they look at it work, they see it, oh, it's nice and beautiful colors. But I think it's so important to see all, when they stay here, they look this, they can see this field, okay? But they can <coughs> follow this line and then you get a total other shape of this pattern. Or if you stay here, just a tiny step aside, then you look in this direction and it is a parallel field. Uh, I, oh, yes, to here, and then turns. Okay? And when I made this work in Oldenburg, um, I always uh, talk with the audience, and I like to show them how Islamic patterns are so dynamic and so different points of view uh, create so many different shapes and uh, patterns. and. Uh, and then uh, people con could look on this work from above. And th sometimes they came and they said, did you see the, d uh, the, tri the big triangle? And then I had to come with them. And they say, oh, where is it gone? I have seen the triangle, but now it's gone. So, so it's, uh, uh, it's an, uh, an inner journey. So, uh, y you, you have to, to take your time and look on it, and then you it's fascinating. So, and, and it's different with, uh, with um, uh, patterns on the walls because it's on the floor and they c walk around and they can uh, see all these different possibilities. Okay. Yes, I will tell uh, something about uh, the use of color. Uh, <laughs> Color pl plays a vital role in the dynamic of the field. Um, so I, uh, people ask, how do you do this? How do you uh, uh, use the color what, and so on? How do you decide uh, which color you use? This is an improvisation and I, I'm looking, I, I'm, I have always to be aware of the whole uh, field, otherwise it's... Uh, and um, uh, there, there is only one limitation in the use of colors, and that's that uh, a color mustn't be too dominant, too dominant, so that it can eradicate the flu of the of the ornaments. Um, in this, uh, this here I. <laughs> Here I repeated black and white, and I, I never do like this, but it was so amazing to do this, and I worked a whole day on this part. It was dark black from uh, volcanic uh, ground, I don't know exactly, Etna or uh, I don't know. And the white is from uh, the uh, mines in Switzerland with pyrite elements, pyrite white limestone with a period. 
So I, I, I like to do it, and I did it, and I was not uh, uh, convinced if I should leave it. But I let it in this uh, pattern, and I liked it, and I, I saw that it didn't uh, stop the flow of the pattern. Yeah. OK? So it's a, yeah, it's a part of the pattern. It attracts the attention, and, but it didn't bound uh, you, uh, the, the, your, uh, your attention on this pattern only. It was it integrated in the total, but it's a very trigger element in it. OK? Mm -hmm. OK, that's it. Uh, yes. I will uh, finish. No, not finish. We will show a movie. Uh, of Chaja, and again look at the different lines, at the different shapes. not such a good quality. I did it by my own, but... Um... <laughs> no, never. No, I never worked on it, no. The first time it... Yeah. The colors are not uh, so brilliant as they are original. The light was uh, for this. You see the white of the pillars is not white. It was... Uh, um, when I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when the work is finally finished, it rests only for a while. You see, that's uh, uh, sometimes for a day. In Leiden, it was just a day. In Berlin, just a day. Sometimes a week or a month. And this was for two months in uh, Chaja and the museum. But um, finally, it, did, it will be obliterated in a performance. And these are some images of the performance. This was with young girls from Chaja and Palm. Uh, this was Leiden. And Berlin. And then the audience, the people get a little back with uh, collected uh, mixed world sand and they take it home with them. I will show you some images here from a performance in Oldenburg. It's very, perhaps you see it. I, this, I did this by my own. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, as I said, you can order this uh, on the website of my foundation. Uh, I have, I have cards here, so uh, if you want to, to buy it, also you can uh, go to the website www.sammlungweltensand.com. Uh, That's it.